Hi, I'm Bill Kinney, and this is the second video from my Calc 1 students on their Project 1 about iteration dynamics and Newton's method. But again, if you're not my Calc 1 student, I hope you can still get benefit out of this, and maybe even this Mathematica notebook is on the internet somewhere. I haven't put it on the internet yet uh, as of this recording, but who knows, you could be watching this 10 years after I've recorded it. So it could be out there somewhere, and you could look for it if you want. In the first video, we look through the introduction. I'll glance through it again here, too, again in this video. You can pause the video and read this if you like. Uh, I will slowly scroll down, and you can continue reading uh, with pausing here. Uh, it's about function iteration uh, and what happens when you have different starting initial conditions called seeds. What happens to the iterates, x1, x2, x3, x4, etc.? Do they have a limit or not? Or do they go off to infinity or not, or some other pattern? Uh, graphing calculators often can do something similar uh, pretty easily. Uh, the ANS feature on a TI graphing calculator can help you verify what you see here, and you should try that if you haven't yet. In the first video, we thought about examples similar to exercises 1 and 2 that you see here. Uh, in this video, we'll do an exercise example somewhat similar to exercise 3 that you see here, although the example we'll do is actually more complicated than what you see here. So here is the other notebook that's got examples similar to the exercises for the project. Again, example one and example two are what we did in the last video. You can pause the video here and glance over this. We use this Mathematica command called nestlist to confirm the iterate, iterates, uh, although the directions say experiment with your calculator. Here is the second example, and you can see what happens. In both of these examples, there was a fixed point. 6.25, or 25 fourths, was the exact fixed point for this function. It stayed the same when you plug in that input, you get the same number as output. In this example, for this function, two-thirds is um, a fixed point. Though the behavior um, otherwise, if you are slightly different from the fixed point, was different from example one to example two. All right, here's our new example for this video, example three. The function is f of x equals x squared minus one. I would encourage you to go ahead and experiment on your calculator. Uh, the behavior of the iterates for the following seeds, more seeds here to consider. Note, you may have to iterate for a while to see, uh, for some of these, to see what happens. They don't change, some of these don't change very much right away. You'll be describing what happens in a slot like this uh, in words, and again, you should highlight your words in blue so the grader can tell that it's what you wrote. All right, and it, as far as what I do, again, I'm going to use Nestlist and Mathematica to see what happens here. So the function is f of x equals x squared minus 1. That's how to enter it. And then we use nestlist, capital N, capital L, square brackets for the function input. The inputs for nestlist are the function you were iterating, which I called f, then the seed. And I'll, I'll go ahead and start with this first seed here of negative 1. And then the number of iterations to do, you could pick 10 or 20. Let's try 20. What happens here? Well, that's something different. It, the numbers are bouncing back and forth between negative 1 and 1. You should check this in your head by plugging negative 1 into this function. You're going to get 0, then you plug 0, and you get back to negative 1. This is called a cycle of period 2. It's a periodic kind of thing, just like a, a cosine or sine is periodic. This is periodic, though it's a discrete kind of periodicity rather than a continuous kind. So both negative 1 and 1 are going to generate these cycles of period 2. If I start at 0, same thing happens, okay? Actually, it's interesting if I, I don't require you to try 1, but if you picked 1 as your starting value, uh, that's technically not a cycle of period 2 because the starting value 1 does not match negative 1 for the rest of what you see here, but it's sort of eventually periodic with period 2. After the first iteration, then you get to a period 2 cycle. All right, what about this uh, seed here? 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. Again, continuing to copy and paste. I don't have to actually do the F over and over again. Let's just do nest list itself. Let's go ahead and put that exact expression into here, though on many calculators or it would be a, an approximate expression. I can use this writing assistant over here to get that expression in there in exact form. Whoa, that's kind of crazy looking. What's going on there? Um, hmm. We might numerically approximate those like this with the capital N feature. And lo, lo and behold, there actually seem to be all the same number. Uh, actually, if you use the capital N feature in the following way, let's see, we can even confirm they're the same number to say 30 decimal points. Yeah, they seem to all be the same. It seems like this is a fixed point. Is there another way to do that? Yeah, you could simplify instead of approximate. Uh, let's see, no, okay, got to get rid of the 30 there. 
There we go. Simplify shows, confirms that they are all the same number. In fact, 1 plus square root of 5 over 2, that exact expression for an exact number, is a fixed point for this function. Okay, so that's something else that you should describe up here. You could describe in words. Oh, 0 and negative 1 generates cycles of period 2, bouncing back and forth between 0 and negative 1 all the time. 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 is a fixed point. The iterates stay fixed all the time. Plus 1.61803 and plus 1.61804 are pretty good approximations to 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. What happens when we plug those in? I think I will delete some of this output here so we can see more things. All right, copy and paste that. Change this to 1.61803, uh, an approximation for 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. What happens? Hmm, something different. It doesn't stay fixed. The points move away from one, uh, 1 plus square root of 5 over 2, evidently. Slowly at first, but then they kind of speed up, and they head toward negative 1, at least approximately. Do they stay at negative 1? Well, no, they seem to bounce back and forth between negative 1 and 0 eventually, okay? Does it actually equal negative 1 and 0 eventually? No, these are approximations but they're getting close enough to negative 1 and 0 that Mathematica is rounding them to negative 1 and 0. So they approach the cycle of period 2, um, though they don't equal those numbers exactly. That's what happens with this as the seed. What if I use the other one where I make the last number a 4? Yikes, something radically different. These numbers are going off to infinity. Look at that power, 10 to the 363,772 power. Yikes really, really big. Okay, so something radically different is happening when we're just below the fixed point versus just above the fixed point. How about the negative versions of those numbers? They're opposites here. Put a negative sign in front of this one. Once again, we're bouncing back and forth between negative 1 and 0 approximately, at least in the long run. And notice with this one, uh, it becomes positive right away and stays positive until you get close to uh, bouncing back and forth between 0 and negative 1. Uh, make, copy and paste this one, make it a negative. Going off to infinity, okay? It is getting positive after the first iteration, and just like the other one, it's getting very, very large, and probably looks like the same numbers, actually. Which should make sense because it's x squared minus 1. Okay, so thing, different kinds of things are happening. Let's try uh, 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. Copy and paste this one. That is a fixed point too. And plug in numbers. Uh, that's approximately positive 0 0.61, uh, 803, 804. So we'll plug in those kind of numbers as well. Let's copy and paste all four of these at once. And then we just need to get rid of the ones in front of them. These are all approximations to 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. Actually, the negative ones are approximations, excuse me. What's happening with these? They aren't changing much if you look at them. These numbers are not changing very much. They are changing some, but slowly, so evidently this is where the note comes into play. You may have to iterate for a while to see what happens. Okay, so let's go past 30 iterations now. Let's go, say, to 50 or 60. Okay, it looks like we're eventually approaching the cycle of period 2 for this one. Uh, what's happening with this one? We're eventually approaching the cycle of period 2. How about this one? Same thing. How about this one? Same thing. So all these ones that are plus or minus approximations to that fixed point, um, move slowly, they change slowly at first, but they eventually approach in the limit the cycle of period 2. So lots of different things going on here with this example, and it's making me want to know why all this strange kinds of different things is, are happening, uh, and part of the project eventually is to try to figure out why strange things like this can happen.